Okay, so thanks so much for joining us today. Um, like Amanda, thank you, Amanda. Like um, she said, if you have any questions as we go, please feel free to type your questions in the Q and A box. Um, Michaela and Amanda will both be watching that. Um, I'm Dr. Julie DeGraffen Reed. I am an associate professor and the undergraduate program director uh, here in the Department of History. This is my 20th year at Baylor, um, and I'm also a Baylor alum from about a uh, hundred million years ago. So I'm super glad for this opportunity to tell you a little bit about our his history department. Um, and we have a senior history major with us, like Amanda said, Michaela Fain, who is uh, gonna uh, is here to talk to you about uh, her own experience a little bit, and she'll join me in being available for questions in the Q and A after. So, uh, tell me something about. Ooh, I have to. Why is that not working? Okay, cool. Um, so our department, uh, we have a spectacular faculty uh, that are doing amazing research in their fields and they also love to teach and interact with students. Um, all of them have a heart uh, for studying the story of the past and teaching others about historical thinking. This is absolutely one of the things I love about my job um, are the people that I work with. We have 22 full-time faculty members, all PhDs. We have five faculty members who teach regularly uh, for us, but hold joint appointments in other parts of the university. So for example, uh, we have an archeologist that we split uh, with anthropology. Uh, we have a classicist that we split with the classics department. Um, and then we have three part-time faculty members, all PhDs. So when you take classes in the history department, particularly once you get in the major, um, you don't have to wonder, am I getting somebody from the history department? The answer is yes, you're getting somebody from the full-time uh, full faculty. We do have a PhD program um, in the department and at any time during the semester, uh, we have between zero and four doctoral students who are teaching a section of an introductory survey, but they don't do that until after they've taken an intensive course in teaching, uh, particularly that, that specific um, survey. And so we uh, make sure that they're prepared. So our students, um, we have about 140 majors. Uh, as of yesterday, it was 141 exactly, which gives us a faculty to student ratio of between five or six to one. Um, we have about 95 minors. And so we're a good mid-size major. Um, uh, our students are awesome. Uh, yeah, well, our students are awesome. I'll just stop with that. Um, they just are. So let me tell you a little bit about coursework in the department and what the degree looks like. We provide a general history BA. Um, it's a 36 hour major. Um, there are four intro survey classes, two in world history, two in US history. If you have uh, AP credit, I know AP has been like bizarro world in the last year, um, but if you have a push credit or a world history credit, that's where that would count. If you have dual credit, um, that's where that would, that would count. Uh, we have one required methods course. I'll talk more about that course in a minute. And then uh, our majors take two US upper level courses, two global uh, courses, and two European courses, plus an elective. Within that framework, though, um, students are really free to choose uh, what interests them um, and what works best with their schedules. Um, and they build really just fascinating programs of study. If you're interested in the secondary major, so you're thinking of doing a major in, say, the business school, but you want a secondary major in history, that drops the elective. So it's a 33-hour major for secondary majors. We do have, <laughs> why is it hard to advance this? This is bizarre. OK. Um, we do have a uh, history secondary ed track. So if you're coming in already thinking, I absolutely know that I want to teach high school or middle school history, uh, there is a secondary ed track that's a 36 hour program plus courses in the School of Ed um, that ends up with your preparation um, to be certified to teach in Texas. We have two four plus one programs. Uh, so four plus one programs mean that you do, you, you start MA coursework in your senior year. And so after five years, so for the BA, one finishing the masters, after five years, you end up with a BA in history and a master of arts in teaching. That's with the School of Ed, that's the MAT. Or uh, in uh, five years, sorry, four plus one, uh, you end up with a BA in history and a master's in museum studies. Um, and that's the MST um, program. So if that's interesting to you, that's great. 
Uh, it's a major that works uh, really well with other majors and minors and certificates. Um, this is just a quick list from students that I was advising this last week um, of common uh, majors and minors, things that they're pairing with history. It works really well with uh, poli sci, works with biology really well. Um, if you're thinking of being pre-med, your bio classes will come first, but then you can you can end load all of your history courses. Um, and that makes for a really interesting application to medical school. Um, three of the most common minors are listed actually first. So there's a lot of people who are interested in going to law school who will minor in legal reasoning and analysis. Uh, women, women's and gender studies is really uh, a popular minor, and so is military studies, which is actually housed uh, in the history department. If you're planning to participate in Baylor Business Fellows or USCALS, um, you can concentrate in history. That's a new thing. You can actually declare uh, history as a, a, a primary concentration. If you're interested in the BIC program, you can actually major in history and be a BIC student. Um, and cool bonus, I didn't even think of this uh, until just this moment. So that's our home building. That's Tidwell Bible Building. We share it with the religion department. Uh, you actually will be moving into brand newly renovated Tidwell Bible Building. That move happens this summer, which is pretty cool. About a fourth of our faculty are uh, involved in study abroad. Um, have been involved in study abroad in the last five years. Uh, several trips were begun in and are housed in the history department, uh, the Baylor and Argentina program, for example, uh, the Baylor and Austria program, the Baylor and Maastricht program. Uh, we highly encourage study abroad for our students. There's nothing better than studying the history that you're learning and being in the same place where it happened. I mean, it's just pretty amazing. Um, okay. Uh, what do history majors do after graduation? Uh, great question. Everybody always wants to know this. So we did a survey uh, in 2018 of all of our alums, and it turns out that the answer is everything. <laughs> they do everything. Um, we have, there's probably uh, the two largest contingents um, of graduates go either into law or into education in some form, whether that's uh, secondary education or higher education. Um, but then I, again, the answer is, is kind of everything, right? Um, they work for the government. We have a lot of people that work in intelligence or in civil service, uh, state department. Uh, we see a lot of our students go into nonprofits and politics. Uh, we see a lot of our students go into archives and museums. Um, we see uh, our alums going into the business world. In fact, um, a recent survey by the American Historical Association uh, said that the three largest uh, post-grad occupations for history majors are, in fact, uh, law, education, and uh, business. Okay, so that's a pretty normal thing for us. So we're kind of all over the place. Um, and that's one of the things that we really um, emphasize, right, is that this is such a good major, um, just in terms of teaching you to write and think and communicate well, that it just translates to lots of possibilities um, post-graduation. Uh, we have a little um, uh, feature. We have a Friday newsletter just for faculty in the department, um, and our uh, department chair will often share with us what he's heard back from alums, and he makes these little slides. And so I grabbed some of them, so they're a little bit blurry because I just literally screenshotted them from the from our faculty newsletter. But just so you can see some examples, right, of students that have written that were history majors at Baylor and then are writing back to say, look, this is how history um, helped me, right? And so here's an example. Um, of uh, AJ Salinas, who is uh, who went on to uh, law school and is now an ADA uh, in New York. Um, here's another example: um, an Emily E. Kong, who was a history major at Baylor, went on and got an MA, MA in African American Studies at Morgan State, and now is working for the National Park Service, right, as a historical interpreter. Um, he's also, by the way, got a consulting business on the side. Right? There's that business um, that business angle. Uh, Jenna de Graffenried, who, by the way, is related, but we don't know each other. So it's like this super distant, <laughs> super distant, really strange, where in the world are there two people with the last name de Graffenried? Apparently right here. Um, got her BA in history in the uh, 90s and works now as an archivist for the LBJ Presidential Library down in Austin. Um, but you'll notice she's also worked for the CIA. She's worked for the National Archives. Uh, she's worked at Accenture, right? 
And then finally, um, Brandon Gaynor, uh, who got his BA in the, the O's, uh, 2006, uh, was a business major, uh, took a history class. I love this story because Brandon was in my class, took a history class and suddenly realized he hated taking business classes. His parents said, well, why don't you just take something that you love? And so he did. He switched over to history major. He was a great history major, was just really uh, enthusiastic about the things that he was learning. And then he went off and did what he thought he was going to do, which is to go into um, uh, the, the field of energy. So good preparation for uh, lots of different uh, possible postgraduate paths. The methods course that we require of each uh, history major is now called History Workshop. Um, it is a um, uh, there's a couple of things that it does um, for our major. So one is that it is going to uh, prepare students with the kinds of tools that they need to be successful in our upper level classes. And so it's going to go over for all students things like what are the different ways that people can do history, right? It's also going to go over um, what might sound like nitpicky things, but how do I cite a paper in a history class? Okay, so it's going to make sure that you know those things before you get into upper level classes. What I'm really excited about um, is that in the last uh, year or so, uh, there's a we built in a unit on career development. And so we're really um, talking with our students, even as early as sophomore year, um, about the kinds of uh, possibilities that are available after graduation. We bring in career services. We work with our majors on um, being able to articulate, right, what kinds of skills that history majors bring to the table for any employer. Um, and that's been really, uh, really great uh, over the past, um, past couple of years. We've been really pleased with that part of the program. What is it that makes Baylor unique? Why should you come to this history department and not 57 other history departments, right? Um, so I would say two things. So one is that you're gonna get a faculty that's gonna have all the books and articles and research of an R1 faculty, but you're getting it with um, a group of faculty that are expected. It's not the exception. They are expected um, to be enthusiastic about their work with undergraduates. Um, and, and honestly, that's what sets it apart from a, a big R1 history department or a large school, right? Where a lot of sort of full-time faculty who write lots of books are generally sort of siphoned off to work with graduate students. Um, we still see undergraduate education as like, the, that's the thing that we do. We do have a PhD program, but Undergraduate education is where our heart is, right? I mean, this is the bread and butter of what we do. It's what Baylor has always been about. And so that's um, one thing that makes us uh, unique. Another thing that I think sets us apart, maybe from smaller liberal arts colleges, um, is Baylor's Christian identity. That's an important um, distinctive and a willingness by the faculty to take religion seriously when engaging in history and historical research. Um, and so uh, I think those two things uh, in combination uh, make us a unique choice. Um, and I guess I could add a third thing, right? I mean, you, you can't go to another history department that's got two national championship basketball teams in a row, right? I mean, there's only one of those. So anyway, okay. Um, so there's that. Uh, so for more information, um, I would encourage you to check out our website. There is my contact information. You can send me an email anytime. If you forget how to spell my name because it's super long, if you just go to the Baylor um, uh, site and put in history and find history faculty, you'll find me. Um, I'm happy to answer questions anytime. There's not a dumb question that you can ask. Um, I guarantee you somebody's asked before. Um, so I'm happy to take questions. And in fact, we'll open it up now to any questions that you have. But before we do that, I want to give Michaela a chance to talk. So I'm going to stop sharing. Hope everybody's got that contact information. Um, okay, great. So I wanted uh, Michaela to give us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, what's your favorite thing about being a history major, either at Baylor or in general, it doesn't matter. And then what are your post-graduation plans? 
Okay, so I'm going to go in that order. Um, let's see if I can get all of the things. I am a senior history major who's minoring in English, so my minor was on the most common minor slide. Um, I'm from California, so I am an out-of-stater, so I understand what it's like to be away from home. Um, what else? I live in a freshman hall. I have all four years, and that's definitely played a role in my Baylor journey. Um, I think that's enough about me. I think that covers all of the bases. Um, what is my favorite thing about being a history major? I'm gonna go with two different things. The first is because there is a ratio of five to six um, students per professor. From the very first moment I stepped into Tidwell, I knew that I was gonna be loved. Um, and that was as a senior in high school. It was before I even applied and committed to Baylor. And so like the undergraduate program director at the time sat me down and said, I wanna answer your questions. And at the end, he looked at me and he said, we want you here. We're going to make sure that you get through. Like, we want you here. We want to love on you. And I walked out of Tidwell and I went, Mom, like, I think I have to come here. Like, this is where I want to be. And that has remained true. Um, I just took um, graduation pictures. And so in my graduation pictures, I was like, I will take a book from every single history class I've taken. And the grand total is 15 different history classes. And that is not normal, but I absolutely love the professors. Um, the second would be the history workshop class. So I took it as historiography. And that was the class that really set me on the path I'm on now, which is really exciting. I came in wanting to be a teacher because both of my parents are teachers. And with that class, I realized that I really love writing and researching and would love to work in an archive one day, which leads me to my post-graduation plans because I graduate in less than a month now. Um, and that is I'm moving to Washington, D.C. to attend American University as part of their master's in public history, which is basically how do you get the public public engaged with history. Um, so it's taking my passion for education, my passion for history and blending the two. And I'm really excited, so. That's great. I didn't know that story. That's so good. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, so if you have any questions for us, we would love to answer them. One question that we get sometimes um, is about uh, the, there's a history course your freshman year uh, in what's called the Common Core now, um, History 1300, the US and Global Perspective. Um, and so that course, so we, we do teach that. So our faculty, um, our faculty are responsible for teaching that class. That is a class that's for majors in lots of different schools. So it's not just a history major course. Um, it's required in arts and sciences. It's required in the business school now, I think. It's required in, well, a bunch of them. So Robbins College, I think. Um, and so several different schools require that that course is part of the core. Um, it's not part of our major, right? And so if you have, again, if you're thinking about, oh, I have US history credit or I have dual credit, that's gonna count towards the classes in our major, but it won't count towards that core class, which sometimes seems a little confusing, um, but it's not part of the, it's not part of the major. Um, you'll, you'll notice that when you see a list of um, classes online, but it is required as part of the core. What we do um, for anybody that's coming in as a history major is that we offer a special new student experience section of History 1300 each fall. And so you'll be grouped with all of the history majors in one section of that class. And so that's, um, I just love that. We, this is something that's only two years old. Um, we had 26 uh, in that class last fall. Um, it gives you a chance to get to know history majors because um, you're all kind of um, in one space together and you so you take the course but there's also built in some things about getting you used to Baylor um, we introduce you um, I taught it last fall um, and I'm teaching it again this fall um, I introduce you to our academic advisor in College of Arts and Sciences advising he comes in you can see him face to face talk to him that is super helpful because advising can be super confusing <laughs> um, we uh, bring in a study skills person early to talk about how college might be a little different than high school. Um, we bring in um, the chair of the department so you can meet him. Um, we couldn't this last fall because COVID and 
restrictions and things, but what we hope is we build in community building activities, right, where you can have dinner together and that sort of thing. And, you know, fingers crossed, um, that kind of stuff can happen again this fall, who knows. Um, but the, the point is that you get to know a kind of a core group of your cohort um, from the very first year. Um, and so we're really excited about that opportunity. I don't see any questions that have come in. We have like about a minute if anyone wants to send in a question, um, but hopefully you've got the contact information and you're more than welcome to reach out as well. Michaela, do you know some of the things that um, other people are in your class that are graduating are planning to do after graduation? This is really putting you on the spot. Um, so a lot of my friends are um, either education-based history majors. Mm -hmm. So I have a friend right now who is in a Waco middle school and she is loving every minute. She wanted to actually teach um, high school history until she got into a middle school classroom through the School of Education, um, fell in love with it. I have another friend who is doing law school. And so really like education and law have been the big ones. Yeah. And that's pretty typical for our program. About 20, about 20 percent go to law school, about 20 percent go into education and the other 60 percent, again, all across the board, doing lots of different things. I know several have been um, accepted into master's in history programs. Mm -hmm. So they are going across the country to pursue higher education. So Great. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us and providing the information today. And uh, students, everyone who's joined us, thank you so much. Hopefully you learned some great information. And please stay connected and ask questions if anything comes up after premiere. Yes, Enjoy please. the rest of your sessions. Thank you. Yeah, have a good lunch break.